wooden sound and this particular harp has 47 strings there are wire bound strings on the bottom and gut strings in the middle and nylon at the top kind of like fishing line and the shorter the string the higher the pitch and the lower the string the low notes and there are seven petals and I think you had talked a little bit about the colors but there's over 3,000 parts on this harp wow. lots of little bits and um, when you move the pedals on the back, there are little notches in the back. The harp is strung in C flat. So if I have the pedals all on the top notch, I'll take a peek at the end. All right, there's not any tension on the strings. It's just that's where it's strung, I'm right here. So let's use the C string. So if I move it to the next little bit of a, I'm going to raise it half a pitch to this, this disc right here. Watch it move. There's C flat. Here's C natural. And I'm going to go another step, shorter. That's how I do my sharps and flats. So C flat, C natural, C sharp. Okay. And then you're just reading them along as you go along. You can set your pedals at the beginning, but it might be something completely different at the end of the song. But it's called a double action pedal harp because I can go sharp or flat. In the old days, they just went one direction. And little folk harps, you have to tune the flats in before you start. And then you move a little lever for the sharps. So, um, made out of wood, maple, uh, spruce, soundboards, and we use fur. It's just a really lovely sound, not only because they look beautiful, but they also sound beautiful. So here's the column of the harp. This is called the neck. And mine's in Chicago getting its neck fixed. And this is called the, um, the body. And there's a big resonating box in the back. Okay? So the sound comes out of the back. And it also comes off the sound board right here in the front. But it's got that hollow back so I can put strings in, also kind of carry it around, and, and then also um, for that sound. How much does she weigh? This one, oh, 90, 85, 90 pounds. Um, this one's bigger than my other harp, a little bit bigger. It's got a flared soundboard out. Like I said, I'm, I'm renting this one. Um, but, uh, so it's, she's heavier because there's more, a little bit more wood and she has one more string than mine. Um, but mine has straight soundboard, but mine was born, uh, born in 1930. <laughs> um, the kids always liked it because she looks, it has a, a gold crown here. And so they thought she looked like a queen um, when I would take it to the schools. But anyway, um, so I'm moving the pedals. There's these pieces moving here, going up and down in the column. And then underneath the neck, this is where all the intricate comes in. That's how they move all those discs. So really take it. Take a look at it because it's just a marvel, I think. Um, so there's several companies that make them. Um, Lion and Healy's been around for a long time in Chicago, and they have Salvi. They kind of join together, Italian makers. And there's some other ones out there as well, but those are the two most popular ones. Some guys broke off from Lion and Healy years ago and made WW harps. But I've not been to the studio, but one day I'll get to Lion and Healy to go take a look. About yeah. how long would it take to make one like that? You know, I don't know. I know to fix the neck and do some of the stuff they're doing on mine, they're keeping it from November to March. So it takes a while, you know. But you want you want craftsmen. They hand carve them. And you can go online and look at some of the work. And, and I had a student years ago. She's passed away now. But when I first met her, um, She'd been saving her money, and I just happened to meet her by chance. And she said, I've always wanted to learn to play the harp, and I've been saving money to get one. And so she went up there, and she handpicked. She had an inlay put in and all kinds of special things done on her harp. It was beautiful. What's the price range? Anywhere from, you can get a three-quarter size pedal harp for about $10,000. Um, uh, I was talking with someone about, I was looking at some used instruments in, in Richmond, and there were some really lovely pedal harps for about 23000 But they go on up as fancy as you want to make them. And some of the ones that have all the gold on them are just woo, way up there, you know. But again, they last a long time. I've, I've had um, 
some people contact me and they've got their grandparents or their mother's old instrument and they were asking me about researching them, you know, and trying to help them find. Because, you know, if you've taken care of them and they've not been dried out in, in the heat or sitting in the sun, or, no, I'm glad you closed the blinds today. Um, because if it's not in the direct heat and that kind of thing, it, it, it's like a banjo, but you have 47 strings. You've got to tune it more often because heat, air conditioning, you know, I got here early to try to let it get used to the room. But this morning when I loaded, I had to make sure the heart, it's like a baby. You have to heat your car up. <laughs> you have to get everything loaded. You, know. uh, you had a question? You just answered it. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, yes. How many of the car do you have now? Well, I have a heart mobile. <laughs> I used to have an old Suburban, I, I mean an old, old station wagon. I have an old Suburban now that I use uh, to put my harp in there. And a, I come with a lot of stuff, but people, that's what I was telling her earlier. That's the non-glamorous part. Because <laughs> you have a dolly, and then you have a seat, usually a stool and a stand, and gear bags and music and, and everything. So I have an old Suburban that I use. And a Creeper. You know, years ago, I just had to meet people and become friends with them. And I, I was, I'd say, I need to have at least two people there to help me. And now I have a dolly, and I can do some things on my own. But uh, in the old days, when I was younger, they didn't have all that stuff. No. About how long can you play before your fingers just get? To me, it's not necessarily. If I haven't been playing for a while, my fingertips, um, my calluses aren't built up like a guitarist, and my fingertips can get sore. So um, it's the tips more than the muscles. Yes, it's the fingertips. You get some blisters, um, and uh, but for me, it's more of my shoulders because you have to. You know, you're sitting on the edge. Posture is key, and so I'm, I'm balancing the harp. It's not laying on my shoulder. See, it's between my knees. My feet are working. See? So posture, strong back, and my shoulders are what gets tired. Because you're out here. You're just out here playing. But um, yeah, I can play a couple hours, you know. I used to play three hours, and then it was like, no, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> but, um, I, once it's there, I want to play. Um, it's the hard part, just getting it in and out, and then once you're there, it's just fun to sit down and play stuff. So, mm -hmm. any other questions? I don't want to end. I don't want to stop. Yes. I, I was going to ask. You were, you were demonstrating how you hold your hands. And like, how, how do you how do you hold your hands in the proper way to strength strength? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I had said earlier, I don't use my pinkies, but the the, the Salzano method that I play, we always have to have an open area here. If you don't, then your fingers get all jammed up. So I'm usually in an open position here, you know, not that I'm drinking high tea or anything, but you know, you're not using, you know, your pinky. So, and I can play chords or arpeggios, so I might be playing a four note chord, I'm using, oh, make it to a nicer sound, um, four notes at once, like a four note chord, like a piano, or I might play an arpeggio. Thumb high so that when I'm coming down, you want to have room to cross over and then crossing up. You got to learn to cross under or over because <laughs> you run out of fingers. <laughs> um, and then we usually use just tips, or sometimes I'll use my fingernails. There's certain things that'll look like a little crescent moon over the music. The music's fun to look at just because there's a lot of pictures. And uh, so you, know, you get a, a chance to do some different things and when you get some of that different instrumentation. Um, but then also I, I can use piano music and I just have to mark my pedals in and, and do some things like that. Does that help answer your question? Okay. And then usually with the play the glissandos, you know, it's kind of like, oh, and then down with your thumb. Or if you want it to sound like, like a, a Sherman commercial. <laughs> you know, it's back like a circle, you know. Little angels. <laughs> yes. Do you have an absolutely favorite piece that you like to play? Hmm. Um. Hmm. Or are you like most of us? It depends on the moment. It does. <laughs> you know, different ones talk to me. Um. Uh. I, I play a Mozart piece a lot when I'm when I'm warming up. If I'm uh, there's a couple. Um. Like uh. <coughs> let's see here.
harp is in tune. You get used to what the notes should sound like. And, and I like that one. The, the Riding on the Wind is one yeah. I've always loved as a kid. I'm on a, you know, I still play it as an adult. Yes. You mark your own music. I sure do. Um, I, I'm, I, you don't want to see my music. It's not pretty. <laughs> but um, and, and I've recently been working with another musician. Uh, some of my mu my musicians that I played with all the time, violinist and flautist, have moved away, and I'm doing a big wedding next weekend, and I needed to try to find somebody, and and so. I made some copies of some things, and she said, I don't know what all this stuff is. <laughs> she's working on her own fingerings because she's playing the viola. And uh, so I said, well, this is what this means, and this is what this means. And, um, but I do, and, and um, their fingerings are already there, and um, certain things that you buy that are already there suggested. But phrasing and fingerings and pedals, sometimes they're marked, sometimes they're not. If I'm doing something that's piano music, I'm writing my own pedals in. Um, and that kind of thing. So it just depends on if it's harp music arranged or something I'm doing, which is a lot. I'm, I, just, I mess around. I don't always play it the same way twice. Um, you know, if I'm playing with someone, absolutely, I play it the right way. But when you're playing by yourself, you take a little bit of creative freedom. I mean, you know, unless I'm playing with a vocalist, which may have to have the exact way every time. Any other questions? Oh, yes. Do your children play the harp? I don't have any kids. Oh, no, that's okay. That's all right. I got pets. I got four babies. Um, I have goddaughter that I love dearly, um, and I have nieces and nephews. Um, but I don't have any kids. I always went um, when I would go into the schools. The kids would come up, and when I was an artist in residence, and they would come and gather as close to the harp, almost sit on it. They were so close. They just loved it. You know, and the idea to be—it's just magical. It really is. My mother like to have it just sitting in the living room when I was a kid. And if I practiced at night, they could hear it when they were going to sleep. You know, because it didn't sound so bad um, to go to sleep. And, uh, but it's, it draws people in, it really does. And it draws me in, you know, I love to play. And um, if I can help someone else feel better or enjoy it, then it's even better. And it really does, people are always curious. I've met a lot of people playing at places because they're just fascinated by it. You know, it's beautiful to look at, and, and um, the vibrations are really nice, you know, for the people that are sitting near and also as a player. 